You do? I brought a beta. Oh, you clap. Good start. I bought a beta. This is my 2021 Beta X Trainer. actually toyed with this idea even before I got my KTM. We talked about getting this or the KTM free ride. And unfortunately with the free ride, they don't make them anymore like they used to, they're electric now. So parts are very hard to find and it just didn't seem like a really great idea. I'm not really sure why we didn't go with this option in the first place. You didn't like beta. I mean, this has always <laughs> been an image thing with her. She just never wanted to ride a beta, especially Accurate. since I had my first KTM I let her ride it, which ended up turning into her bike. So. Yeah. And now it's been recycled mm -hmm. <laughs> once again. More on that later. But yeah, guys, when we were looking to make the step from the 150 RB to a full size bike, there's a step in between what we did the KX100 after that. That didn't work out. So the 150 RB was ultimately her favorite First, smaller bike. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Isn't that what you would recommend to smaller absolutely. people? Absolutely. If that had electric start, I would probably have kept it up until maybe now. <laughs> yeah, that was the deal breaker on why we didn't keep that bike is mm. it's annoying to kick and especially in an enduro situation. Like if you're just doing trail riding and you're not stopping and doing log jumps and all this kind of stuff, the bike would have been all right yeah. for that. And even on that bike, like I barely tippy toed on, this, on each side. Mm -hmm. So then kicking it when you can't touch is again, hard. So you barely tippy toed, meaning you couldn't flat foot even on that bike. Correct, yeah. yes. I've never been able to flat foot except yeah. on a Grom. And that was the RB too, so it was the big wheel. Yeah. But the biggest reason for wanting to move up was to get a button, electric start, but you have other options. There's the 230F, there's a few steps in between, but in terms of performance, it's a step backwards. The suspension is worse, they're heavier, and there's a lot of cons to that, but you can make a step somewhere in the middle that gets you electric start and full-size wheels. And then I'd say I really did love the two stroke. Two stroke? Mm -hmm. So then combining all of them together kind of fell into the KTM. Why'd you let her do that? You just want her to be cool. We've had just so many hate comments over the years on why she's on those bikes. And let me tell you, she can handle the power just fine. It was never a power issue. And I think the dumbest argument that I hear from people is to get 150. a 150 <laughs> or the 125 that shares the same frame and it's the same size. Like she's never had a problem with the power. Those modern two strokes aren't as violent as you think. Yeah. They're the same weight, exactly. same, same seat height. Same frame. So that argument is freaking retarded. Can you say that anymore? <laughs> I don't know if you can say that anymore. Stupid, we'll say that. So then why did we go to this now? Well, I got rid of my 350. Um, surprise, surprise. <laughs> yeah, more on that. The 350s, we bought with the intentions of doing dual sport rides and riding connecting roads out west. And out west, I enjoyed a four stroke a lot more than we do back here. It's just a completely different environment. And we were just looking for a versatile bike that doesn't exist. So we ended up getting rid of both of the 350s. We just weren't happy back here. and. Overall, the two strokes are just so much better for the riding that we like to do that we're willing to make that compromise. I really did not like the four stroke. And I know I would have gotten used to it. I know that it took, I only rode it like three or four times off road. So it was just an adjustment and I wasn't through that adjustment period. But overall, first impressions, it was hard to go from a two stroke to a four stroke and doing the same riding that we had been doing on the two strokes. So yeah, they're harder to ride. You got to work the clutch a lot more. You got to mm -hmm struggle to keep them running. It's just a completely different experience. You can get really lazy with the two strokes. You know, the modern two strokes, they lug like nothing else. So you can get real lazy with the clutch. You're not destroying your fingers, trying to keep the bike running at low speed situations. And would an ECU and exhaust make it better? I don't even want to start that journey again. I'm over it. So yeah, we're back in the two strokes. And why didn't she continue to ride the KTM? Well, as she progressed, the biggest limiting factor always for her has been her size. She is five foot even, five foot zero. That's it, that's all she's got. Yeah. We struggled a lot on a particular ride in Arizona where you just didn't have the option to touch on either side. So she was just getting launched off the bike every way. And it's just always been an issue. She just can't touch. So she'd have to hang her leg off and- It's doable. Like I've made it doable so far, but 
when we got out to Arizona, the riding is, like he said, very different than what it is here. And I've made it doable to ride here. You know, when I come to a stop, you have to look and scan to see where you can put your feet. And even on some single track, you know, I've made it doable and sure, I dump it. Like, and I would say probably 95% of the time I dump it because I can't touch or I'm already stopped and I dump it. The dirt's a lot softer here, I'll say that. And when you're doing single track out in Arizona and it's all rocks and you're biffing your bike and destroying it, touching became more of a priority. Sounds weird. No, that um, sounds right. So why didn't we lower the KTM? At the end of the day, while you can get almost two inches out of the PDS bikes, you still have the large frame. So ergonomically, it's still huge. And uh, that's where we thought more about the X-Trainer. What else is out there? And the X-Trainer, the ergonomics, it is actually a smaller bike overall. Mm -hmm. Not just the seat height, it is actually a smaller bike. So why don't we just try it? If you right. don't like it, then we'll go back to the KTM, we'll yeah. keep it around and we'll see what happens, but. Cause I didn't really ever have, like I didn't have trouble picking up that bike for the most part. Sure, mm -hmm. it gets exhausting, but like I probably picked it up 15 times mm -hmm. in a ride by myself, like completely by myself. But why struggle? Like if you don't have to, let's try it. See if it does make that big of a difference. You'll never know until you try. I guess we should start at the beginning on how we even came across this bike. Yeah, I was gonna get to that because it's kind of interesting. But yeah, so we talked about it the past few weeks. That was kind of the direction that we were headed. We were looking at them on Facebook Marketplace. I was calling dealerships, seeing what they had available. And then we went to Vintage Days last weekend. Crazy weekend. Crazy weekend. One for the books. Dude, look at that trailer full of bikes. Daytona. Oh, dude, look. X Trainer. Oh, it's for sale. 21, dude. Let's pick this up. <laughs> it's clean. Oh, dude, it says it's never been ridden. Yeah. What do you think? It looks good. Put a deposit on it? on it right now. zero kilometers. Did he just buy it and literally never ride it or just intended on selling it? No, he just, he bought it, he was gonna ride it, but he has a TM 300. Oh, okay. okay. So he rides that, it's gotcha. a motocross one, and he's short like her. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's why I was like, it looks lower than factory. Yeah, I got the factory stuff in the box here. Pretty nice. 2021. Zero hours, never been ridden. Never I was been like, ridden. uh. And the heavens just shine down on this bike. The sun was glistening off of it. And so we stopped and we started talking to the guy. And then we realized not only was it for sale, but it already had the factory lowing kit with the chop springs in the front. She sat on it. And what was your first impressions? That I could put both my tippy toes on each side. <laughs> yeah, she could touch on both sides for the first time. Yeah. And I think that, boom, completely changed her perspective and just the overall size, she could tell Definitely. that it was small. Yeah, I don't know, everything's just, yeah, <laughs> miniature. Like it's all downscale. This is exactly what that's supposed to be. That's who it's marketed for. So we ended up talking to the guy, we threw a deposit on it. We went and took the Helix to grab some cash, came back, and that's the story that we found a yeah. Beta X Trainer at Vintage Days. Yeah, so this guy had actually bought this bike, lowered it, and then decided that he had another bike that he rode more and never rode this. What were your first impressions overall? You hopped on it, you started it up, and you rode off into the madness. What were you thinking? What was your first experience like? Um, that it was similar, like as far as the power goes, like it's smooth. I did almost dump it as soon as I got on it because the clutch engagement is much further out so i was just like waiting and waiting and waiting but otherwise i felt much more comfortable on it because it felt like a smaller bike and you can absolutely tell sitting on it that it feels like that and him riding it other friends riding it they say it has well for people that are normal size frame <laughs> say it has a similar feel as a trials bike so and even the power delivery too you'll notice on this bike the pipe size it's a lot smaller so it's a lot more tame than some of the other two strokes. So it was designed to be like that. You know, mm -hmm. it was designed as more of a trials bike as far as the power delivery and stuff right. like that. And it's really- But it still has plenty of power. Oh yeah, it's, it's still a 300, 300 two stroke. Yeah. I mean, come on. And you can also throw the double R pipe on there and 
re-jet it and unlock all of the power. So might do that in the future, I don't know. But for now, this bike is perfect. Her demeanor changed completely once she hopped on it and actually rode it and realized, man, like what have I been missing out on? But I will say that, yes, we considered this bike back in the day, but I think we were looking back in 2018, 2019, and they were sure. not counterbalanced. That's I, I, I did imagine. tell him that I would not go back to like something that was not counterbalanced now that I've been on the KTM. I Once. rode my brother's Beta 300 RR, that's not counterbalanced, and it is a big difference. And even this does have a little bit more vibration than the KTM, but it's, yeah, completely manageable. Once you've rode one and then you try to go back, it just doesn't work. There really is a big difference, and I know how people comment and like, oh, I'm gonna rode my mother. Dude, I've rode all of them, you know, the Shurkos, the Betas, the Gas Gas, the freaking KTM, and like, once you feel the counterbalance, it's a world of difference. They are so smooth. So that's kind of why we nixed that back in the day. Do I think she still would have been fine with it? Yeah, yes, absolutely. But it was just kind of a, another reason why we tried out the KTM yeah. for her. And once again, she still did fine on that bike. She could have got it lowered. She could have spent more time on it. She could have got a lot better. I do see a lot of your guys' comments and a lot of them are kind of silly. A lot of people freaking out like, why is she on such a big bike? And like, at the end of the day, while this does fit you better, you could have been fine either way. Yeah, absolutely. Jeez. I progressed a lot on that bike and gained a lot of skill, a lot of confidence on that bike, but there was always that lack of being able to touch and that wasn't gonna change. And even with lowering it, but this was a really crazy opportunity that kind of, we're here, this is what we've been talking about. We might as well buy it now. It was a great price. Counterbalance 2021, zero hours. Literally couldn't have been a better combination of factors, so. Yeah, I think the bike was made for her. I'm glad we made this decision and I think it's gonna work out better for her overall. So what are my thoughts on the bike? Like coming from the KTMs and riding the best of the best. I really like this thing. Looking at some of the things that they put on this bike, let's start with the ground up. They put a decent set of tires on it. It's got a 140 rear tire, some Shinko Enduros, really good tire. Brand new. Also, it is oil injected. So old school snowmobile pre-mix injection style. And it's a convenience thing. I know a lot of people delete it because they feel better about mixing their own gas. If that mechanism were to ever fail, I'm not saying that's not possible, but I think for now and in the future, we're just gonna run it as is because why not, it's convenient. Also, this thing is factory street legal, so it comes with an MC title. That's true, that's Turn true. signals, horn, high beam, low beam, brake light. It is convenient if you're ever riding connecting yeah. trails and you wanna be street legal, street legal from the factory. Two stroke, who else does that? Mm -hmm. Pretty cool. Yeah, absolutely. I like the seat design. I like how the handles are integrated into the back there. So it's nice to have a place to pick it up from when you inevitably drop it. It's a push button, it's toolless. Pop the seat off, fill your oil up, you know, get to your battery. Everything is definitely pretty accessible. Comes factory with a fan. I think you really do get a lot for your money. Do they cut corners here and there? Maybe a little bit. I mean, you got Nissan brakes, but you got a Brembo clutch. Originally, that's what Beta was all about, is good fun at a cheaper price, but they've really grown a lot as a company over the years, and I've heard great things with their customer service, and overall, it's a good looking bike. I think a lot of time and energy and development has been put into this bike, and I'm excited to see where it takes her as a rider. Yeah, absolutely. Overall, would I still rather be on a KTM? Probably, but like I said, they don't care about the shorter riders. I don't know what they're doing with the free ride. They need to bring something back that's marketed because there is a market, man. Yeah. There's a lot of girls out there, especially now within the last, what, five years. Mm -hmm. There's been a lot more females getting into riding, so. Even males. I mean, he was short. Yeah, exactly. Had it. So there really needs to be more emphasis on companies making bikes for shorter people, yeah. but not the compromises of having right. to get a lower powered bike or- Not a full size. <laughs> a trail bike, smaller wheels. There needs to be more options. So thank you Beta for offering this bike. We're excited to ride the piss out of it and see how it does. And yeah, I'll show you guys the bike that I'm gonna be riding soon. Oh, Other than that, snap. you wanna go hop on and go for a ride? Let's do it. Sweet. And one thing that I was gonna mention is that the brake lever and the shifter are definitely closer to the foot pegs. And that's something I definitely noticed because I had to like pick my feet up and move them closer when I was standing to ride, but which again, wasn't a big deal. Small feet. <laughs> big feet. <laughs> big feet. Water skis. Big meat. Okay, let's go ride. Yeah. <laughs> Shout out to click chairs, get you one. <laughs> 